Good afternoon. I'm going to go ahead and call to order the uh, January 30th meeting of the Oklahoma City Riverfront Redevelopment Authority. Uh, item two is items from the chairman. Item A is being, we've got a change to the rules and regs being worked on uh, wording wise, so, so we're going to get come back to that. Uh, item B is a recommendation from the Water Use Committee on the MOU with the uh, USS Oklahoma City Park Association. I'm going to ask for a deferral for 30 days or till the next meeting on this. I can get a motion for that. I have a motion and a second. Cast your vote. And it passes unanimously. Now we can go back to item A. It's a recommendation from the Development and Water Use Committee on the revised Oklahoma City Riverfront Redevelopment Authority rules, regulations, and guidelines for the river. Sorry. It's all right. While she's getting that put together, I want to express my appreciation to the staff for working on this for so long. It, uh, it has been a long process. They hadn't been updated in quite a while. They were very lengthy, the old ones. And uh, I think they've done a good job of, of uh, redoing through our rules and regulations and taking out the information that is covered somewhere else in the city ordinances and simply referencing those ordinances so that uh, you're not duplicating it. Uh, plus, that way, if the council ever changes the ordinances for some reason, uh, they're automatically changed because we simply reference them anyway. So uh, again, I want to thank uh, staff for working on this for so long. Uh, the River Trust Committee, Land and Water Use Committee, just met, and we made a recommendation on our first item, which is the rules and regulations. And as we read through this, um, the only change that we would like to make as a committee is under the fiduciary item, which is page 12. And our recommendation is that the nominations for the name the bridge program shall be accompanied by a check payable to the Oklahoma City Riverfront Redevelopment Trust in the amount of $40,000. So that changes it from the River Foundation. Upon final approval of a nomination, by the mayor and city council, the check shall be deposited into the River Trust account or forwarded to the Oklahoma City Community Foundation for immediate deposit into the Oklahoma River Endowment Fund for the sole benefit of the Oklahoma River Corridor upon recommendation of trustees. Our viewpoint was the trust needs additional funds. So by having the opportunity to maintain those naming rights into the River Trust account, then we have an opportunity to do things as a trust. Or should we decide that we do not want those funds at this particular time, we just forward them to the Community Foundation. And that is the recommendation that we will, that we would like to see in the item when we get to it further into the, gen the agenda. And that comes to you through our committee. Okay. Everybody understand the change that's being made? Just simply gives us an option. That's all it does. Any other questions or comments? 
Do we need a second since it came from the committee? No, that's just a recommendation, recommendation. to you. you don't Any other questions? All in favor of that? Cast your vote. It passes unanimously. Now we need a motion to accept the rules, the revised rules and regulations as amended. Hey, do we have any questions on the rule? Again, we put these out last month. Uh, had a chance to review them. Is there any questions you have? Gary, I, I did just have one question. I was, I'm really glad we talked about the bridge thing. I, I think I didn't know about bridge naming rights on the river until I read the rules and regulations. So I hope there are lots of people listening today and that we can encourage people to take advantage of this really unique opportunity. I mean, it, I'm not suggesting $40,000 isn't a lot of money, but in the big scheme of things and other naming rights, it seems very uh, reasonable. And so I hope people would take advantage of it. The second thing um, that I noted, um, just because they're in the news so much, we have rules and regulations about all sorts of you know, aircraft and things, and we don't mention drones anywhere. I wonder if there's any consideration or if we should include drones in aircraft or Doug, do we have any kind of rule related to our parks in general? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, Doug Copper, Director of Parks, Recreation and Cultural Services. Uh, the, the, we do have rules and regulations about radio controlled aircraft. They can only be flown in designated air parks of which we have two. One is at Lake Hefner and one is out at Stanley Draper. Those are the only legal locations that uh, novices can fly radio-controlled aircraft. Now, there are exceptions through FAA, and we cite FAA rulings, that uh, businesses such as engineering firms or architectural firms or, or, or uh, marketing or uh, video, whatever, using licensed pilots, according to FAA rules, they can fly our property with, with a permit from us. But that's the only exception. Uh, you, can't, you can't go down to Radio Shack and buy a, a drone and then go down the river and fly the river. That, that's not uh, appropriate. Our rules and regulations say they either have to be at Hefner in the air park or at Stanley Draper at the air park. Okay, and those are the regulations that are incorporated into that we reference basically these new yes, rules by reference. Okay, yes, as long as it's included, it just we speak about model aircraft, but nothing else. So I just yes, ma'am. All right, they're Thank considered you. by our our legal uh, the municipal counselor's office as radio controlled aircraft, and they're already cited in our rules and regulations okay. and ordinances. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Do I have a motion? Okay, cast your vote. It passes unanimously. Item three, the meeting minutes from December 19th. We have any changes? Cast your vote. It passes unanimously. The consent docket received the oil and gas revenue report and received the Oklahoma City, Oklahoma River corridor events update. Do we have any questions on those? Cast your vote. It passes unanimously. Item five is the primary agenda items. Item A is to receive the river maintenance projects update. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and trustees. My name is Sam Sladen with the Department of Public Works and the Oklahoma River Projects Manager. We have five items on today's list. First is project MC0532, which is our uh, SCADA and automated river controls for the, the locks and dams on the river. On Sunday, uh, December the 17th, uh, monitoring well number one and the level sensor LS01 both dropped offline, which basically both of these control the river levels at Eastern Avenue Dam. Uh, thankfully, our uh, 
system is set up to where if it loses those systems, it locks it where it's at. And it doesn't just drop out and drain everything. So, but both of those were uh, looked at and um, the, it turned out to be a defective circuit board inside the control house that had to be replaced. Once we replaced that board, it was back up and operational. Um, and then on January the 7th, it turns out that uh, the depth sensor in monitoring well one was also failing. And uh, when we got the new board in, it told us that there was a problem with that, and that was also fixed. Sam, did somebody get an alarm? Yes, ma'am. When that uh, happened, we get them on our on our city cell phones. Okay. They're 24/7. Uh, we we have a three-man crew that are on constant notification Great. for failures and, and alerts and alarms on the river. Uh, second item on the list is project MC0608. Uh, this is a new project number for an old project. Um, Y'all might recall project MC0531, which was the structural repairs to the May Avenue Dam. We put it out for bid twice, uh, unsuccessfully on both occasions, uh, primarily because they came in way over budget. Um, the administration has decided to split it up into two separate phases. Uh, one is the structural repairs, the other is the painting. That way, hopefully, we can get some more realistic numbers. Uh, we still hope to run them concurrently uh, and only have to drain the river one time. Uh, and we're hoping that we will be able to do that this coming or winter of 2018. Um, it's expected to bid this coming summer. Third item is project MC0609. This is a sedimentation basin maintenance contract. Uh, this project will, will replace the expired contract for sediment removal and maintenance of the sedimentation basin, which is located uh, between Meridian and MacArthur. Uh, this area catches set of suspended solids in the river and where we can pull it out uh, typically in amounts of about 50,000 cubic yards a year. That's a lot of dirt coming down the river uh, and keep it out of the lakes basins. Uh, so we hope to have that out for bid this summer as well. Uh, item number four is the street traffic drainage maintenance activities. Um, this past month they've removed approximately 9.6 tons of floating debris or floatable debris and uh, we have, uh, the river maintenance crew has dry docked two of the boats uh, for their annual maintenance inside their brand new river maintenance facility and they are really enjoying those facilities and working indoors again. <laughs> so, and the final item is the stormwater quality activities. On January the 3rd, uh, the stormwater quality staff gave a presentation to the youth council about the history of the Oklahoma River and then took the participants on a brief tour of the river from the Oklahoma City Boathouse Foundation finish line tower uh, to the Paul Brum Junior Dam and back. If you, that's all I have. If you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. By break on item two, by breaking those into two different uh, phases, is there an expectation that we'll have bidders now because you couldn't find one firm that wanted to do both of them? The, the problem that we, uh, that all of the contractors that bid on it originally when we polled them was that the majority of the work is painting. There, and and uh, so hopefully our bid documents this time around will be set up to have a painting, a primary painting contractor do the bid to have that work accomplished and then a general contractor to do the structural repairs and concrete work. So we're hoping that that we can get it uh, performed in a more reasonable amount of time and money. <laughs> okay, any questions? Need a motion to receive the report? Cast your vote. Pass it unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Item B is receive the quarterly Oklahoma River Cruisers update. Good 
Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, trustees. Well, it was a fairly good year for 2017. It wasn't quite the boom year we had in 16, but we had quite a few cancellations. I'll just go through the numbers with you. Um, the ridership for the 2017 season was down 12% compared to 2016. This was primarily due to the increase in cancellations. It's important to note that none of the cancellations were related to the locks or dams. They were all weather related. Extreme weather that we had in August and even in a few weeks in October, April of course, <clears throat> uh, led to 195 cancellations in 2017 compared to only 95 in the prior year. Our total ferry service riders for the year was 11,663. Total riders on all services was 14,549. So we're pretty happy with that number. The measure of riders per service hour was just down 6% from 2016. It was still at 11.67 riders per service hour, which is a pretty good number. Our target is generally about 11. For charters, total charters in 2017 were 97. We had 101 in 2016, but this year for some reason, severe weather wanted to hit on days when we had a lot of charters. One weekend in particular, we had five charters canceled due to severe weather. In total, we had 16 charters that had to cancel because of weather, which was very, very high compared to prior years. <clears throat> Otherwise, we would have beat the 2016 number. Jeannie, what do we do for people when we cancel their <clears throat> charter? Well, the first thing Shay does is, is notify them uh, that we can't go out, and, and then she tries to reschedule them for another day. Some of them do, some of them don't. It's just a, a question of what the occasion is, how well planned it was. You know, sometimes it's an anniversary or a birthday or, you know, some special date, and they, they just simply look for another venue to celebrate that day. But some of them, she, it does manage, especially if they're corporate outings, she's able to move those frequently. <clears throat> and it's clear from this graph, I put this together to try and demonstrate the relationship between cancellations and ridership. Uh, obviously, the more cancellations you have, the, the lower riders. We expect that on ferries. Uh, we ex certainly expect it on charters as well. And these are uh, our canceled trips by month. And you can see that huge spike in August of 2017 that really did, did hit us hard since that's a high ridership month for us. Uh, normally there aren't any in the month of August because it's usually a hot, dry month. And this year, um, I think the normal is less than an inch of rain. And last year it was almost three inches for the month of August. So hopefully we'll have better weather this year. Here we go. The Holiday Boat Parade took place on December 17th. This was a free event for the public. It was a nice evening. The temperatures were in the 40s. There were calm winds, no precipitation. It was a, it was a great event, and I, I hope some of you got out there to see it. HMS Ferries has moved the Oklahoma River Cruises offices to the Santa Fe Intermodal Transportation Hub on uh, EK Gaylord. The, the building was recently renovated. Our offices are in the main part of the building, just right off the main hall. For the open house, Christmas Express came and decorated the hall for the, uh, for the open house during downtown in December. Our offices are just to that door off to the right. Uh, they're very, very nice quality cubicles with sliding glass doors and, and lots of acoustic. And we're very happy where we are in that location. And if you wanted to drop by sometime for a tour, we'd be happy to, happy to take you through. The door to the left is the waiting area for Amtrak. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions for Janie? OK. Motion to accept that report. Cast your vote. Passes unanimously. Thank you, Janie. Item C is to receive the quarterly Oklahoma City Riverfront Redevelopment Authority schedule of cash receipts and disbursements. Any questions on that? Move to second. Second. Cast your vote. Passes unanimously. 
Item D is to receive the consultant review committee report for project MC0586 on call engineer to serve the Oklahoma City Riverfront Redevelopment Authority and authorize the staff to negotiate a contract with Triad Design Group. This went out uh, for uh, bid again, so to speak, and <coughs> the recommendation. Yeah, we, we, uh, Mr. Chairman, we went through our normal uh, consultant selection procedure and uh, uh, interviewed three firms, I believe, and uh, Triad was chosen to continue that contract. Any questions? Motion to receive that report. Yes. Cast your vote. It passes unanimously. Item E is to uh, is revised Oklahoma City Authority rules, Oklahoma City Redevelopment Authority Authority rules, regulations, and guidelines. This is the item that the River Use Committee brought forward with the amendment. Um, do we need to pass the amendment again? Uh, to be approved as amended. Okay. So I need a motion to approve as amended. Cast your vote. Passes unanimously. Item F is the item I'd like to strike to the February meeting, or not strike, defer to the February meeting. Can I get a motion on deferral? Cast your vote. It passes. Item G is an MOU among the City of Oklahoma City, Oklahoma City River, 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 River Development Authority, and OKCX Limited for the Oklahoma River Trail Relay on May 20th, 2018. Questions on that? I had a question, but it's just a personal question. We have the permit time from 7 a.m. on Sunday to noon on Sunday. Do runs take just five hours by the time you clear out all of the uh, items that the vendors brought in? But most of the 5Ks don't take much more than the five hours. Uh, they're, they're not as, as big of an event as a, a uh, Half marathon or, or or a full marathon, um, we think we think that the the amount of time staff went through this with the promoter, and we think that the amount of time is appropriate for this activity. Okay, I just kind of wanted to know for my personal um, information, so that's good to know. Thank you. Okay, I need a motion on the MOU. Cast your vote. We passed unanimously. Item H is the actual revocable. Cast your vote. It passes unanimously. Item I is revocable permit with Deandra Gaines, aka Dre Gaines Z, for the 420 voter resignation and education rally and campaign rally for gubernatorial candidate Connie Johnson on April 20th. Cast your vote. It passes unanimously. Item 6 is the claims docket. Do we have any? Yeah, we had some claims. Cast your vote. It passes unanimously. Item 7 is additional items. Comments by staff. You have the Park and Rec uh, Department Director's Report. Anything else you want to add, Doug? Uh, you've all seen uh, most of the fruits of our labor over the last few, uh, actually a lot over the last year, but I recommend that, that you accept the report as written. Answer any questions. Any questions for Doug? Cast your vote. It passes. A2 is to receive an update on the water and wastewater improvements at River Park. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, trustees, um, you may recall in the last year there's been, well, maybe before the last year, there's been significant interest in establishing an equestrian park on the south side of the river uh, down by Agnew. And a committee uh, was formed and um, a master plan was done and um, 
I think a request had been made to put some of those improvements in the 2017 GO bond authorization, and there just wasn't room to do that. So a commitment was made to the committee, that, um, the organizing committee, that we would try to do some in-house improvements to jumpstart that project. So a part of that is some utility work that needs to be done, water and sewer lines in the area, to serve uh, a future uh, building um, uh, livery and so forth. So Nathan Maidenwall from the Utilities Department is here to give us an update on what those improvements look like. Thank you, sir. Um, good afternoon, Chairman and Trustees. Uh, as I said, Nathan Maidenwall with the Utilities Department. And just a brief presentation on what we're doing over at uh, Agnew, to Agnew, just south of the Oklahoma River. So um, you guys are familiar uh, with the River Park area, um, just south of the Oklahoma River on the east side of Agnew, west of Penn. So that's where we're looking at our project. So, so what we're doing here um, is we're improving the water facilities located on the property. As you can see on the picture, the blue lines are what we're proposing to install for the water lines. Uh, the Red dots are the fire hydrants there that will provide fire protection to the area. Um, all told, we're putting in about 1,700 linear feet of water lines to help serve that area. The green lines are sewer lines that are being in, that will be installed. Um, we're challenged for gravity sewer service at this location, so those will flow to a lift station. We'll pump the water up into a force main, and then it'll pump it south to our existing sanitary sewer system. Uh, most of the features that we're building there on the site are going to be below ground. There'll be pipes. The only things we'll have above ground are going to be fire hydrants and then the lift station component. Um, we're going to put that in an enclosure similar to what you would see for like a dumpster. Um, it'll be eight feet high so we can make sure it's protected, it's not as accessible. Uh, the type of structure, the block that will be used will be split face masonry and we'll put a screen gate on there to make sure it's not visible just so people can't see what's inside there for theft and vulnerability. And we've been consulting with uh, the tri Design Group who did the overall plan for the equestrian facility to make sure the look and feel of what we're doing matches the overall concept. So we've, we've started down the path on this already, so uh, I beg your pardon, we're, we're proposing an open bid tomorrow. Um, and then we are going to award contract in February, get started with construction as soon as possible. And the goal is to get the below ground improvements done as fast as possible in case additional surface improvements want to get contracted out. But the overall project we think will be done in August. And with that, I'd be happy to take any questions that you may have. Could you go back to the slide that shows where that lift station would be on the map? Yes, ma'am. That little green square? Uh, yeah, it's right there in the parking facility. We placed it there in a location so it wasn't in the middle of the site, and it's right next to the proposed dumpster enclosure. So it's kind of like there'll be similar look, similar location. We plan to be done with the overall project or complete the total project in August. Yeah, the, the water and sewer were a significant issue with trying to do anything down there. So having that in will really <clears throat> And to follow up on that a little bit, the parking uh, that you see here, the parking to the west or to your left uh, paralleling Agnew is existing, but it's not in very good condition. The rest of it that extends on to the east is not existing. Uh, so what we plan to do is have street maintenance crews uh, do some resurfacing on that existing lot. And then uh, I don't know how much we're going to do. Uh, we've, we've set a budget, and we'll go as far as we can with the, uh, with the, the new lot, uh, go as far east as we can. It looks like those new lot spaces are much bigger, so those would be trailers or the trailers that to be yes. able to. Okay. Right, that's great. Any other questions? Thank you. I need a motion to receive that update. Cast your vote. It passes unanimously. Thank you. Comments by trustees. Any citizens to be heard? Thank you. We are adjourned.